Okay, so the new Obelisk 5 has arrived today, and this is my unboxing video. So let's see what we have inside. Okay. I've been for this for a while. So let's see what we got. Ooh. All right. Wow, they sent this thing in a big case, man. nice. All right, so let's take that puppy out. Put that there. I'll put the box to the side. I like the way plenty of nice foam is packed in. So beside being in this big heavy Pelican case with the Oz 5. Okay, so this thing comes in this big massive uh, Pelican case. Uh, these things are built like tanks, these cases. So what we have inside is we have a warranty card registration. We have a instruction manual, quick start guide to explain what everything is. This is just a packing slip. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now let's see what's inside. First, let's see, I don't know if you can see it real well, but we will grab a flashlight real quick. Share some extra light on that. You've got the Obelisk 5 logo engraved in there. Um, there is a charger, charging cable, USB cable, and the unit itself. So let's take those out and take a good look at what they look like. You know, standard wall charger, no big deal. Um, just a basic USB cable. Oops, so drop that down, doesn't matter. USB cable. You can see the Pelican case is very top heavy, um, but this thing is sturdy, man. I like the way the foam will cut out. And here is the Oblis 5 with double antennas. We'll look at the top, take a look on top. We have a headphone jack, Char the USB port for charging. You got the Obelisk 5 logo here on the bottom. If you can see that too well. And on the back side, you've got the Wi Fi connection, the power, uh, it's information. And on the bot on the back side, you also have a speaker. You can see that there. And on the bottom, on the bottom, you have the SD card slot. And look at that. This is a limited edition. I have number one of 100 on the limited edition. I have the first one. That's awesome. Very first one. And of course, there's a serial number. That is cool. Okay. I'll turn this puppy on. You can see it's a touch screen. Uh, there's a lot of different things that are involved in this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the instructions and come back and we'll see if we can give it a little bit of a run through. All right, be right back. Okay, so I went in and I set up my Bluetooth and my Wi-Fi to that to the Oblos 5. Um, so let's go over what everything is. The first one, as you can see here in the instructions, is dictionary mode. That's up here. Uh, as you can see, that's up there. The next one... Well, not necessarily the same as on the screen, but they have a draw mode, an energy mode, a log mode where you can see the words that were spoken, a motion mode, a phonetic mode, proximity mode, and a true-false uh, IT session. So we'll go in and we'll hit phonetic mode on the touch screen. Now, what the phonetic mode? What, okay, we'll go ahead of that. What the phonetic mode is doing is putting together parts of speech um, to see if it comes up with any words that way. Um, the proximity mode is really cool. 
what that does is um, works very similar to a REM pod when there are when something comes close enough to trigger it you'll get a noise from it sort of like you would with a REM pod um, what it's doing now is it's uh, showing in a radial graph the I guess it's the energy levels around it I'm not 100% sure this one's a little bit different than the previous units that I've used before so um, but that's what that would be you know there see I touched it and it went off it gave us a reading so essentially it works like you know it works like a very similar to a REM pod I would I would gather and so I'm gonna go out of that when I came in close proximity to break the field it gave us that pinging um, true false mode is exactly what it is it figures out the environmental conditions around the unit um, the idea is that you can speak to a spirit if there's a spirit there that they can move around the unit it's going to change the environmental conditions and therefore give you a, a true or false reading again let's keep in mind that the Alvis is a very controversial device in, in the field it's IT, uh, ITC communication which as far as we know ITC communication could be totally random we don't really have proof of it in any way that it works or not it's a theory that it works but we don't know so you know not like EVP where there's been a lot of science given to the study of EVP which is totally different than ITC people confuse the two ITC you know there's people who believe it people who don't we don't have enough science behind it to say whether it's it's 100% true right now you know some people believe it could be totally random we don't know you know people have different opinions on it you know now we can put it in energy mode and what that is going to give you a graph showing you the energy levels around the unit as they change um, you'll get spikes or lower you know so that we can get an idea of what's going on around it go back. Um, same thing this is draw mode and what this is going to do is give you a readout in blocks of the environmental conditions around the unit and they'll come up consistently until there are changes when there are changes the colors will change and the patterns will change um, again it's a very ITC's in its infancy um, so you know we, we don't know exactly here we'll put it into motion mode and as you can see as soon as I move it the graph changes so essentially what this is working is as a geophone as I hit the table you're getting reading so it's it's just it's a different form of geophone which is actually kind of cool we use a geophone a lot in investigations you know uh, right now my table is dead still I tap on it and boom you get the reading so the geophone that's a nice option they call it motion mode but I would call it a geophone if it were me all right so we'll go back home on that um, And then we'll go into the one that's the controversial, probably most, which is the dictionary mode. Why? Medic. Okay. Correct. Medicine. Do. Mini. Action. As soon as I turn this on, I'm getting all kinds of activity. Tool. Um. People. I don't know what, what the activity is from. Do wrong. Um. I can't say, but this is this is in dictionary mode. Just so people know, I'll take it out of that for now. Dictionary mode is pre-programmed with a series of words, and the belief is that that depending on the conditions around the ovulus, okay, that the spirits can manifest the conditions around it, and each condition is attached to a word. Um, it could be totally random. We don't know. 
but some people believe, you know, there's a belief that um, when someone passes away, that they gain all knowledge. Again, it's just a theory we don't know, but if that's the case, then theoretically they would be able to manipulate the box to make it say words. We don't know. You know, some people say, I've heard people say, hey, take a bunch of wor words, print them out, put them in a cup, shake them around, toss them in the air, pull it out, and it's the same as an novelist. Don't know, um, which is why I won't, you know, that very well could be, I don't know. You know, we, don't, we really don't know. Again, it's very, ITC is in its infancy. This is all theory. You know, not, none of it's been proven. But it is interesting, you know. We do get, sometimes in using the Obelisk 3 in the past and the Obelisk, uh, the Obelisk X, we've had things that we can't explain, you know, where we've had direct answers to questions or, or situations that were very relevant. Other times we've gotten gibberish, it just means nothing. You know, a lot of it's in the way you interpret it. But this is basically, I just wanted to give a quick rundown of what it is, what the new obelisk looks like. Again, it's got that nice pelican case. You know, it's gonna, it's a little big actually. I'd probably prefer to put this into one of my other cases with other gear, but I mean, you can't go wrong. It's part, it, they, you know, they throw it in on the deal. And you know, let's it's, it's not be, let's not kid ourselves. The obelisk is a pricey unit. You know, it's not going to be for everybody. Um, you know, you've seen it on, on Ghost Adventures and you've seen it on other shows where they've used it. Um, Ghost Adventures probably the most. We've used it on investigations. I would never put it forth as evidence to a client if you were working with a client because it's something that can't be proven. I do find it though interesting. You know, um, when we do investigations just for ourselves, I use it. Again, I would never use it on a client investigation because I have no proof whatsoever that this thing works in the way that it's supposed to, you know. Uh, but I have found some interesting results with it, so that's why I keep, you know, I, I, that's why I have it, you know. But just want to show you what it does. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Lance Phillip of East Coast Ghost and also the Paranormal Pulse podcast. You can find us on Facebook and... We hope you enjoy the video. We'll keep putting out new ones. Thanks a lot. Bye.